There is some news out of Fulton County, Georgia today, where District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who has charged Donald Trump and 18 others in that sprawling election conspiracy case, where she has been subpoenaed. DA Willis may now have to testify publicly at a hearing next month over allegations that she was having an affair with prosecutor Nathan Wade and that Mr. Wade benefited financially from their relationship. The subpoenas were part of a new lawsuit filed by Mike Roman, an alleged fake elector and Trump co-defendant who's trying to disqualify DA Willis from this case. Mr. Roman is now claiming DA Willis is intentionally withholding information ahead of the hearing, which Ms. Willis denies. Now, it's unclear if either Willis or Wade will testify. They could both seek to quash these subpoenas, but if they do testify, they will do so under oath and the hearing will be televised per Georgia law. Meanwhile, the judge in this case, Judge Scott McAfee, who is also overseeing Willis's election conspiracy case, has directed Ms. Willis to respond to the misconduct allegations by Friday. Now, these allegations are merely that, allegations. And as of right now, they do not change the facts of the actual case against Trump. But could they change its outcome? Joining me now is Anthony Michael Price, Assistant Professor of Law at Georgia State University. Anthony, it's great to see you. Thank you for making the time. I know we checked in with you when this case was kind of, or what should we call it, the situation was first unfolding down in Georgia. And there has since been more evidence produced, if you will, of the relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis. I wonder sort of what you think happens now in terms of next steps for Ms. Willis and where Judge McAfee may come down on this. Well, the first thing we'll have to see is whether or not the DA fights these subpoenas uh, to prevent her, to prevent Special Prosecutor Wade and others from testifying in the evidentiary hearing that's that's scheduled for February 15th. So that's the first thing I'm looking for, in addition to seeing what the filing uh, contains um, that, that's due on February 2nd, or at least before February 2nd. I, I think really, ultimately, as a legal matter, it's very unlikely that Judge McAfee will disqualify the office or will find that the prosecution is somehow tainted by this relationship if all the facts bear out as they seem to be bearing out. Um, there are two ba basic claims that are at issue here. One is a selective prosecution claim. In other words, the, the prosecution was only pursued um, and advanced because there was a profit to be had by the DA and by uh, Special Prosecutor Wade. And then there's this claim that there is a uh, larger conflict of interest, um, that there's a pecuniary gain to be had from the conviction of these defendants. I think that latter claim is really unlikely to, to manifest into anything um, in terms of a disqualification. The former one is, is also really unlikely to, to make, to you know, I think to get Judge McAfee's attention because it's really unlikely for these defendants to show that special prosecutors, prosecutor Wade um, and his involvement in this case is really the driving force behind the prosecution. I, it's really hard to bring a selective prosecution claim. So I think ultimately they're both very likely to fail. But there is, I mean, there are other efforts that the state, if not the courts, can pursue to sort of get D.A. Willis taken off this case. Is that right? I mean, I know that there are various commissions that have been established and disbanded and, you know, there are various levels of evolution. But it appears that there are Republicans in the state are, if not eager, interested in further examining ethics breaches in this case, and that could be problematic for D.A. Willis. Is that right? It sure could be. There's a lot of moving parts here. So there is a, a disciplinary body that was created last year um, for prosecutors that the General Assembly uh, couldn't really uh, have implemented because of a Georgia Supreme Court decision. That is being passed through the, the General Assembly again this session. That could be a source of, of a headache for the DA down the road. There's also a Senate committee hearing uh, or a committee that's been formed to investigate the Fulton County DA's office and this particular incident. Um, that could be potentially problematic. There will be subpoena power with that committee, um, but it's really an untested power in the state of Georgia and under, under the Georgia Constitution. So that could be dragged out for quite some time before any information is produced. There's also the potential for an impeachment uh, that I think uh, really would have no success of, of um, you know, no success in, in the General Assembly should that be pursued. Um, but that could also be a potential headache 
or the DA if if more damning evidence is unearthed. So so there are those kinds of outside forces which which certainly um, could create a headache, can create a problem for the DA. I think that you know we really have to separate these issues out into two buckets, right? One is the political, and one is the legal. The legal one being, you know, does this derail the case in any significant way? That seems to be really unlikely to happen. But the political side of things, the optics of it, um, dealing with these kind of outside institutions looking in and uh, you know engaging in oversight, you know, that that's something that I think that DA will really have to contend with, and will be a, a major headache again even if the ultimate legal questions before Judge McAfee are decided in their favor. Yeah, I mean, the headaches are one thing, but one would think that all the sort of swirl of perceived controversy here might undermine her ability to, on, on the most basic sense here, get plea deals, right? I, I think in December, um, Fonnie Willis said that there was a possibility that, you know, more of these co-defendants would be taking plea deals with the state. We haven't heard any plea deals announced, and I wonder if you would draw a line between the sort of allegations that are in the air now, the suggestion that maybe should be taken off or that the case has somehow been weakened, which is obviously the intention here from Michael Roman and his allies, and the inability of the DA's office, at least from the outside, to secure more plea deals from these defendants. It's a real mixed bag. So if I'm a if I was a defendant sitting in their shoes, um, on the one hand, this looks really good because it's creating um, right a, a dialogue that is completely removed from the merits of the case. Um, on the other hand, people have pretty short memories. Uh, juries in the voir dire process are meant to ferret out people who come in with prejudices. Uh, so so there's a real kind of mixed uh, risk there. Um, the other thing, too, is if the, if there was a disqualification, there might be the chance that this gets sent to a DA's office that has no interest in pursuing prosecution, prosecutions or that will make super favorable deals or it could go to a neighboring uh, office like in DeKalb County, which is very similar to Fulton County, um, where you have equally talented prosecutors and the bandwidth and the political will to do, uh, you know, to, to continue this investigation. So that's a real risk as well. Um, I, I don't know if it really ultimately will, will affect anybody's calculus, especially if they can get a particularly good deal. Um, I, I think really what we have to see is what happens with the, the case on, on uh, February 15th and the evidentiary hearing, because this may be... Um, you know, much to do about nothing. There is certainly evidence that, again, is politically, um, you know, not ideal. It is certainly, you know, implicating potential ethical issues and the like. Um, but if it's not going to derail the case or remove the Fulton County District Attorney's Office from the case, um, you know, hedging hedging your 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 bets against a RICO charge um, with an unlikely <laughs> result, and you know, something you probably don't want to do. Right, hedging your bets against hedging your bets against a RICO charge equals never a good idea. Anthony Michael Kreis, thank you so much for your time and expertise on this matter. I really appreciate it. Thank you.